Greetings everyone, I am Dr. David Nagaratna presenting Cartesian Tenses today. The topics that we will be covering today are scalars and vectors, higher order tensors, tensor operations, all the examples will be discussed today and I uh, will be presenting the applications of tensors in fluid mechanics. Scalar is essentially a quantity that is a, a zeroth order tensor and vector can be represented as a first order tensor. Here uh, in this particular uh, example which we are considering today, here the uh, we are considering a position vector of a point P. The position vector here is X vector whose coordinate components in the uh, one direction, two direction and three direction are going to be represented by the its components of this uh, x vector is x1, x2 and x3. Here uh, the coordinate, uh, the unit vectors in the 1, 2 and 3 directions are a1 vector, a2 vector and a3 vector. Here uh, x vector is uh, generally represented uh, uh, in mathematical terms as a column vector whose elements are x1, x2 and x3 x vector transpose is uh, going to be represented by a row vector whose elements are x1, x2 and x3. Now the components of the vector uh, transform in a manner that is similar to a position vector. Here uh, the transformation that we are considering is a, a coordinate system rotation. The components, uh, the newly rotated uh, coordinate axis is going to be represented by 1 prime, 2 prime and 3 prime. Here the com uh, component uh, in the uh, newly transformed coordinate system uh, in the j direction is going to be represented by the summation of the product of the component in the old coordinate system together with the cosine of the angle between the old axis and the new axis. The old axis is represented first by the ith variable uh, by the i, i and the new axis is going to be represented by j. It is to be noted that the direction cosine c i j is not equal to c j i. Let's see this uh, easily for the case of a vector that is rotated in a two dimensional plane that is, that is a vector is being represented by a, a coordinate axis that is rotated about the origin O by an angle alpha 1. Here in this particular case the um, newly transformed uh, uh, component in the um, newly transformed uh, coordinate direction is going to be represented by uh, OD, the component which was uh, in the old coordinate system was OA, it is now uh, become OD. This OD is going to be equal to the summation of OC and CD. OC is going to be represented by x1 cos alpha 1 1 and uh, AB is x2 sin alpha 1 1. AB is essentially going to be uh, equal to CD and hence we have uh, um, uh, alpha 1 1 being equal to 90 degree minus alpha 2 1 and sine of alpha 1 1 is uh, cos alpha 2 1. This is uh, here represented by C2 1 and hence uh, X1 prime is uh, x1 c11 plus x2 c21 and hence uh, x1 prime is a summation of uh, from with i going from 1 to 2 the product of xi and ci1. Now let's see the uh, how the component in the uh, in the two direction is going to be varied in the is going to be represented in the rotated coordinate frame in the rotated um, coordinate system 
PD is uh, essentially it's going to be represented by PD. PD in this particular case is a uh, uh, PB minus a DB. Here a DB is equal to AC with PB with uh, PB being equal to uh, being represented by x2 cos alpha 11. One one. Here uh, alpha 11 one one is the angle between this particular vertical line and the uh, line that is connecting P and the point B. Here DB is equal to x1 sin alpha 11. One one. DB is this particular line. DB is essentially going to be equal to CA. CA is uh, nothing but x1 sin alpha 11. One one. Here it is to be noted that alpha 11 one one is equal to alpha 22 two two and that uh, it is equal to alpha 12 minus 90 degree. Alpha 12 is the angle between the old one axis and the new two axis. Alpha 12 minus 90 degree is going to give this particular angle which is equal to alpha 22. Alpha 22 is essentially exactly equal to alpha 12. And hence uh, we have x2 prime being equal to x2 cos alpha 22 plus x1 cos alpha 12. Here x2 prime is uh, uh, it can be uh, represented by using summation principle as uh, summation with i going from 1 to 2 xi cos i2. Now uh, this particular uh, summation can be need not be written every time and this particular thing is called Einstein summation rule in which uh, xj prime is going be equal to x i c i j. The there is a repeated index that is to be noted here. Here uh, i is the repeated index. Whenever there is a repeated index, the summation over the repeated index is implied. In this particular case, the repeated index is i. The summation over i with i going from one to two is implied here in this particular representation. We'll use this Einstein summation rule. Uh, whenever there is a repeated index in the tensor representation, x j is equal to c j i x i prime. Now, uh, similarly, any arbitrary vectors, say in this particular case u i vector, uh, and uh, can be represented uh, in the newly transformed coordinate system as u j prime is equal to u i c i j. Now. Uh, Tensors can also be used to represent uh, multiplication of two matrices. Here, in this particular case, A matrix and B matrix are being multiplied. Um, here, uh, A matrix is a three by three matrix, and uh, B matrix is also a three by three matrix. The product of A matrix and B matrix is going to be represented by a P matrix. Here, P i j is equal to A i k B k j. Summation of the repeated index is implied. Uh, Here the repeated index is k. Uh, essentially, uh, what is uh, uh, being represented is you know the ith uh, row of uh, A matrix is going to be multiplied with the jth column of the B matrix. Now uh, we learned that the uh, x in The component of any vector can be represented by a product of the component in the old axis and the cosine of the angle between the old axis and the new axis. And uh, such a scenario, this uh, uh, this direction cosine can be brought forward as shown here, and uh, a transpose can be taken, and it can be represented in. Um, Uh, in this particular manner, here uh, it's essentially a matrix kind of a representation where x i prime is c transpose times x y x. Now uh, this particular uh, x in the old axis is uh, going to be represented by the product of the direction cosine and the x prime. X prime is the uh, uh, old uh, Is the newly transformed uh, vector. Now the second order tensor, such as uh, uh, the stress tensor, which is commonly observed in 
fluid mechanics which has nine stress components that is uh, see in this particular case uh, we are considering the a cubical or an elemental infinitesimal fluid element um, which is uh, uh, represented in the x1 x2 and x3 directions here the component of the stress that is normal to the one plane the one plane is a plane that is uh, perpendicular to the x1 axis that is tau 1 1 is the component of the stress uh, in the x1 direction and uh, tau 2 2 is the component of the stress in the, that is normal that is in the two direction and normal to the two plane tau 3 3 is the component of the stress that is in the three direction and normal to the three plane whereas uh, tau 1 2 is the component of the stress uh, here tau 2 tau 1 2 is observed here tau 1 2 is on is exerted on a plane that is perpendicular to the one axis and it is exerted in the direction in the two direction that is what tau first one the first index represents the uh, plane in which the stress is exerted whereas the second index exerts the direction in which the stress is exerted you know uh, using a similar uh, that is uh, in order to express the stress tensor stress that is exerted on the on a plane that is arbitrary inclined uh, we can use such a such a uh, cosine representation that we can make use of the cosine of the cosines in order to represent the stress exerted on any arbitrary plane. Now tau m and prime is going to be equal to cosine c i m times c j n times tau i j. this manner uh, just as we mentioned earlier the once we interchange the indices there has to be a transpose that has to be incorporated now let us introduce Kronecker delta and alternating tensor Kronecker delta is a uh, an important uh, uh, an important concept in tensors Kronecker delta is uh, generally represented by delta ij uh, there are nine elements nine components or nine elements in a Kronecker delta now when uh, del when i is equal to j this uh, Kronecker delta as element becomes uh, takes a value which is equal to one when i is not equal to j the Kronecker delta's uh, element is equal to zero now uh, tau ij times uj is going to be represented with the j index it has to be noted that Tau, and I, tau ij times uj is uh, uh, having a repeated index called j there is a summation that is implied over the repeated index j summation over the repeated index j would mean that uh, we are doing summation with j going from 1 to 3 and as such a scenario delta 1 i1 u1 plus delta i2 u2 plus delta i3 u3 with uh, now if we want to represent the if we take uh, i to be equal to 1 then we will have uh, delta 1 1 u1 representing the component of uh, the u1 component in this particular uh, in this manner uh, this is uh, the this is the result which we get and similarly ej vector dot ea vector is going to represent delta j you may see it for yourselves by substituting different values of j and i now this epsilon uh, there is a uh, another important concept called alternating tensor epsilon ijk it is called epsilon ijk it is essentially going to be a tensor of the order 3 which means that it has 3 to the power 3 elements epsilon ijk uh, can take 3 possible values if uh, ijk is going to be cyclic then epsilon ijk is equal to 1 if epsilon if the, any of the two indices are equal then epsilon ijk is going to be equal to 0 if uh, the indices are going to be anticyclic then epsilon ijk is going to take a negative 1 value 
one of the common uh, relation that exists between the Kronecker delta and alternating tensor is shown by the equation that is denoted here within the box. Here are some of the properties of second order tensors. The trace is trace of a, a matrix which is essentially the summation of the elements which are present in the diagonal of a matrix. Let us represent it here in this particular case by BII with uh, the Einstein summation still being implied in here. In this particular case BII would with I going from 1 to 3 would, would mean B11 plus B22 plus B33. The isotropic uh, part of B is going to be represented by BIJI. 1 by 3 with BKK delta IJ. Here delta IJ is the Kronecker delta and BKK is the trace of B matrix. The deviatoric part of B is going to be represented by BIJ minus 1 by 3 times BKK delta IJ. The deviatoric part that is a part of B that is any tensor can be represented by a summation of the symmetric part and an anti-symmetric part. A symmetric uh, tensor is a tensor uh, whose uh, elements do not change upon the interchange of the indices. Here in this particular case Sij is the i and j are the indices upon the interchange of the indices um, with Sij and uh, Sji we do not see any uh, obvious change in the elements of the tensor. Whereas uh, an anti-symmetric tensor is a tensor whose upon the interchange of the indices uh, they, are, they take a negative value. Uh, and hence uh, in this particular manner this uh, isotropic part of the B, isotropic stress, isotropic uh, tensor B the deviatoric part B can be decomposed into a symmetric and an anti-symmetric part. Symmetric part of a, a, this particular uh, deviatoric uh, tensor Bij bar is going to be represented by half of the summation of the Bij bar plus Bji bar. Whereas the anti-symmetric part of the tensor is going to be represented by half of Bij bar minus Bji bar and in this manner Bij is going to be represented by the summation of the isotropic part and the symmetric part and an anti-symmetric part. Now let's consider the representation of the dot product between two vectors using tensor notation u vector dot v vector is going to be equal to v vector dot u vector. It is essentially upon expanding vector represent, uh, be represented by u1 v1 plus u2 v2 plus u3 v3. Here in this particular case uh, it can be represented by a uh, tensor notation as u1 v1. Here the repeated index is i with i going from 1 to 3 we will be able to represent the dot product between two vectors. Now let's consider the cross product between two vectors u vector and v vector. The components of u vector in the a1, a2 and, and a3 directions are u1, u2 and u3. The components of the v vector in the 1, 2 and 3 directions are v1, v2 and v3. Under such a scenario we have a uh, the cross product being represented by this form, it can be a, the cross product can be represented using easily using a, an a, using an alternating using what what do we call the alternating tensor epsilon i j k. The component of the u vector cross v vector in the kth direction is going to be represented by epsilon i j k u i v j. Now when uh, i is equal to 1, we may see for ourselves by substituting different possible values of i and j that the component of u vector cross v vector is going to be in the 
one direction is going to be equal to u2 v3 minus u3 v2. Now let's consider the representation of the gradient, a term that is nebula, and then the uh, divergence of phi, that is the gradient of uh, phi, and then uh, the divergence of a vector uh, and a curl being represented using a uh, tensor notation. Now this particular nabla can be represented uh, using in the 1, 2 and 3 directions with the unit vector being equal to a1, a2 and a3, a1 times dou by dou x1 plus a2 times dou by dou x2 plus a3 times dou by dou x3 is going to be equal to a1 vector times dou by dou xi. The gradient of phi, phi is a scalar, the gradient of phi is going to be represented by a vector times dou phi by dou xi. Gradient of phi, the component of gradient of phi in the ith direction is going to be represented by dou phi by dou xi. Now the component of phi in any arbitrary n direction is going to be represented by grad phi dot n vector. The divergence of uh, the velocity vector is going to be represented by dou ui by dou xi. Here the summation over the repeated index i is implied with i going from 1 to 3 dou u by dou u1 by dou x1 plus dou u2 by dou x2 plus dou u3 by dou x3 uh, is going to represent the divergence of the velocity vector. Now the divergence of a uh, tensor tau in the ith direction is going to be represented by dou tau ij by dou xj. Here once again the summation of the repeated index j is implied. The component of the curl of the velocity vector in the ith direction is going to be represented by epsilon ijk times dou uk by dou xj. The curl of the velocity vector's component in the 2th direction is going to be represented by dou u1 by dou x3 minus dou u3 by dou x1. Now let's uh, consider some of the solved interesting solved examples um, which will uh, make our understanding of the concept of tensors much more much more easier and we'll get uh, in-depth knowledge of the tensor notation by solving these uh, examples. Now the first uh, solved example which we have at uh, hand is uh, in order to show that delta ij xj is equal to xj. Now the repeated index here is j, the summation over the repeated index is implied, j, j going from 1 to 3, delta ij xj. Now let's, uh, do, uh, let's substitute the value of j into this particular uh, term. We have delta i1 x1 plus delta i2 x2 plus delta i3 x3. Now with the i uh, being equal to 1, when i is equal to 1, we have uh, delta ij xj being equal to x1. With uh, delta 1 2 being equal to 0 and delta 1 3 being equal to 0, whereas there will be only one delta 1 1 which is non-zero and so we have delta 1 1 is equal to 1. And so we have delta ij xj being equal to x1 when i is equal to 1. Similarly, when i is equal to 2, you may see for yourself that delta ij xj is equal to x2. When i is equal to 3, delta ij xj becomes equal to x3. Thus, upon generalizing, we may say that delta ij xj is equal to xi. Now we are here to show that, uh, we are asked to show that delta i is equal to 3. Here once again the summation over the repeated index is implied. The repeated index here in this particular case is i with i going from 1 to 3. Delta 1 1 plus delta 2 2 plus delta 3 3 is what we have. Delta 1 1 is equal to 1 and delta 2 2 is equal to 1 and delta 3 3 is equal to 1 and hence in this particular case the summation results in delta i is equal to 3, we have shown that. Now let's consider the next solved example. We are asked to show that uh, 
डेल्टा आई जे टाइम्स डेल्टा जे के इज इक्वल टू डेल्टा आई के हेयर द रिपीटेड इन नेक्स इज जे लेट मी डू द एंस्टेंस समेशन और द रिपीटेड इन नेक्स जे विद जे गोइंग फ्रॉम 1 टू 3 डेल्टा आई जे टाइम्स डेल्टा जे के डेल्टा आई 1 टाइम्स डेल्टा 1 के प्लस डेल्टा 1 2 टाइम्स डेल्टा 2 के प्लस डेल्टा आई 3 टाइम्स डेल्टा 3 के इज व्हाट वी हैव Now, uh, when del this is what we have delta i one times delta one k plus delta i two times delta two k plus delta i three times delta three k. Now, when i is equal to one and k is equal to one, we have the first term alone being equal to being equal to one. The rest of the terms become equal to zero, and hence our delta i j delta j k is equal to one. Now, when i is equal to one and k is equal to two, we have uh, all the terms becoming equal to zero because uh, either one of them has uh, a non-repeating index in delta, and hence uh, delta i j delta j k is equal to zero. Now, when i is equal to two and k is equal to one, delta i j delta j k becomes equal to zero. When i is equal to two and k is equal to two, delta i j delta j k is equal to one, because uh, the second, this particular second term which I'm underlining here, delta two two delta two two, becomes uh, equal to one, whereas the rest of the terms become equal to zero. In this manner, for uh, when with i and k going from one to three, we can see that. Whenever uh, i is equal to k, delta i j delta j k is equal to one, and whenever i becomes uh, i is not equal to k, you may see for yourself that delta i j delta j k is equal to zero, and thus we may generalize that delta i j delta j k is equal to delta i k. Now let's consider the next solved example. We are here asked to show that e j vector times uh, x vector. Is equal to x j. Now this particular x vector can be represented as e i vector times x i. Here um, x i is the component of the x vector in the i direction. We have earlier seen that e j vector times uh, e i vector is going to be represented by delta j i. Delta j i times x i is going to represent. Uh, we have seen. We have shown earlier in the earlier solved example uh, that uh, delta i j times uh, x j is equal to x i, and hence in this particular case we have delta j i times x i, and hence it results in x j. Thus, we have proved that e j vector times a uh, x vector. It has to be x vector here. E j vector times uh, x vector is equal to x j. Now here in this solved example, we are asked to show that the dot product of two vector, two arbitrary vectors u vector and v vector, is equal to u i v i. Uh, the u vector here is going to be represented by e i vector times u i. And uh, v vector is represented by e j vector times v j. We are taking a dot product between these two vectors, u i times e i vector dot e j vector dot v j. We have seen that e j vector dot e i vector dot e j vector is going to be uh, e j vector dot uh, e. We have earlier proved that e j vector dot e i times x i is going to represent x j. Using that uh, solution, that result, we will have u i v i. Similarly, we may show that u e i vector dot u vector is going to be equal to u i. Essentially, here we are taking a dot product between e i vector and u j e j. E i vector dot e j vector is equal to delta i j. The summation over the repeated index is implied, and hence we have u i. Similarly, we may show that e i vector dot v vector is equal to v i. Thus, we have proved that u vector dot v vector is equal to u i v i. 
now here in this solved example we are asked to show that the derivative of xi with respect to xj is equal to delta j you may see that uh, quickly whenever uh, i is equal to 1 essentially we are going to have when uh, whenever i is equal to j we are going to have a derivative of a component in the i, I direction with i being equal to j we'll have a, when i is equal to 1 and j is equal to 1 we'll have dou x1 by dou x1 and then say it will be equal to 1 whereas when i is not equal to j say for example when i is equal to 1 and j is equal to 2 we'll have a, dou x1 by dou x2 and in that particular case we'll have dou x i by dou x j being equal to 0 and thus we will have 2x1 by 2xj being equal to delta ij. Now we are asked to show that uh, 2x, the partial derivative of x vector with respect to the ith component is going to be equal to the component of the vector in the ith direction, the unit vector in the ith direction. Essentially x vector is going to be ej vector times xj xj here the component of the vector is uh, going to be represented by j the upon partially differentiating with respect to xi we have a uh, ej vector times dou xj by dou xi here uh, dou xj by dou xi is going to be delta ij and hence we have dou x, thus upon doing summation over the repeated index j we will have ei vector Now let's consider this solved example where we are asked to show that dou r by dou xi is equal to xi by r. Here it is to be noted that r is the magnitude of the x vector. The magnitude is going to be essentially equal to square root of the dot product between x vector with itself. The x vector is a ei vector times xi dot ej times xj ea vector dot uh, ej vector is equal to delta ij and we have x i x j to the power uh, 1 by 2 the summation over the repeated index is implied and hence we have uh, xj 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 could as well be x i x i here j is the dummy variable it could uh, be i or j uh, and hence uh, we have r being represented by xj xj to the power 1 by 2 dou r by dou xi is is what we are interested to find dou by dou xi times x vector dot x vector to the power 1 by 2 now upon differentiating we have 1 by 2 times 2 xi over a square root of xi xi now dou r by dou xi is uh, nothing but xi divided by r with r being equal to square root of xi xi uh, this is the result which we wanted to show now let's consider the next solved example where we are asked to show that dou xj prime by dou xi is equal to cosine of the angle between i and j we have learned that uh, uh, the component of of the any vector in a newly coordinate in a, in a transformed uh, coordinate axis is going to be represented by the product of the cosine of uh, uh, the angle between the old axis and the new axis together with xk with the component in the old axis and hence uh, we have uh, xj prime being in, being given by this particular form now upon differentiating this with respect to the component in the old axis the old component in the old axis is uh, represented by xi now upon differentiating we have uh, dou x c k j times uh, dou x k over dou xi dou x k over dou xi is dou i k now uh, the summation over the repeated index is implied the repeated index is here in this particular case is k c1k and hence upon expanding uh, using instant summation rule we have c1j delta i1 
plus c two j delta i two plus c three j delta i three. Now upon uh, uh, we different several possible combinations of i and j are possible. With uh, upon taking several possible combinations of i and j, we'll have c k j delta i j being taking. Several possible values. When i is equal to one and j is equal to one, we have c one one. When i is equal to one and j is equal to two, we have c one two. When i is equal to one and j is equal to three, we have c one three. And in this particular manner, we may see for ourselves that uh, c k j delta i j is essentially going to be equal to c i j. Now let's consider the next solved example where we are asked to show that the Derivative of the component in the old direction with respect to the component in the newly transformed direction is going to be equal to C J I. Now uh, the component in the old uh, coordinate axis is going to be represented by C J K times X J X K prime. Here X K prime is the component of the vector in the newly transformed coordinate axis. And uh, let's um, uh, apply this definition to the derivative which we are interested to find, and hence we have c j k times do x k prime by do x i prime. Do x k prime by do x i prime is essentially delta i k. Whenever uh, i and k are equal, uh, we have this particular derivative being equal to one. Whenever i and k are not equal. To each other, this particular derivative becomes equal to zero, and hence we have uh, uh, with the repeated index being equal to k. Instant summation over the repeated index is implied. C j one delta i one plus C j two delta i two plus C j three delta i three. Now with uh, different possible combinations of j and i, we have uh, C j k x. C J K delta I K being equal to uh, C one one when J is equal to one and I is equal to one when J is equal to one and I is equal to two we have C K J delta I K being equal to C one two when J is equal to one and I is equal to three we have C one three and in this particular in this manner we may show that do X J the derivative of the uh, vector. Old co being in the, uh, whose component in the old direction, old coordinate axis with respect to the component in the newly transformed coordinate axis being given by C J I. Now let's uh, consider the application of tensors in fluid mechanics. The equations that are uh, frequently used in fluid mechanics are going to be continuity equation and momentum equation. The continuity equation uh, is represented uh, at a point. It can be represented by the mm, summation of the total derivative and the divergence of the velocity field being equal to zero, and uh, hence um, it can be expanded and shown in this particular way, where uh, here once again the summation over the repeated index is implied in tensor notation. Here we have the repeated index being equal to i. And hence, uh, we have this uh, scalar equation representing the continuity equation. Now, let's consider the momentum conservation equation. Without uh, uh, tensor notation, essentially, what we'll have is uh, three different equations for uh, the momentum conservation, uh, representing for the three coordinate axis directions. And hence, uh, in this particular case, uh, the momentum conservation. Equation is represented by a uh, total derivative of the velocity vector being balanced with the body force term and the stress tensor gradient term. The stress tensor is essentially going to be represented using a, a stress tensor. There is a component of the stress tensor that is whose contribution is going to come from a viscous term, and then there is a pressure contribution from pressure. This particular way, uh, we may see that the ith component of the momentum equation can be represented in a compact manner using a tensor notation.
this is the advantage of using tensors in fluid mechanics i hope you are benefited using this presentation thank you all for your attention